we have a problem. <laughs> I said that I was on a book buying ban for the rest of the year because I have too many books on my TBR shelf. I bought over 10 since the start of 2019. <laughs> hey y'all, what's up? My name is Avery and today I'm going to be sharing with y'all my book haul for January and February. So this is my first book haul of the year and I actually didn't really expect to do book hauls anymore for the rest of the year except maybe like little mini ones. I expected myself to maybe continue buying series that I have maybe the first book of and that would maybe consist of my hauls. I have books not a part of a series that I decided to splurge on even though I told myself I wasn't gonna do that this year. <laughs> I have over 50 books on this TBR shelf that I need to crack down and read and I haven't done it yet so I don't know why I bought these books. <laughs> I do know why I bought these books is because they all sounded interesting or I already loved them so I had to buy the physical copy. So yes I have over 10 books to share with y'all. I actually have um two full series. You've s seen some of these books already. Most of these you have not, but if I have talked about these books before, I'm going to probably link a video or talk about a video I talk in depth about. So the first set of books that I have is actually a trilogy and that is To All the Boys I Loved Before by Jenny Han box set. So in this box set we have our first book To All the Boys I've Loved Before, the second book P.S. I Still Love You, and the third book Always and Forever Lara Jean. So I have watched the movie on Netflix. If you didn't know there's a Netflix adaptation for the first one. I watched it like right when it came out and I hadn't read the books yet but the movie just looked like so good I needed to watch it and I fell in love with it and I always like told myself hey I need to buy the books. Two nights ago I was watching with my mom and my mom had never seen it before and in the middle of watching it I was like I forgot how good this was and I immediately just bought the box set for like $24 off Amazon. <laughs> so these came in the mail this morning and um I, I really want to crack down on these because I know the movie is only about the first book and I want to know what happens to Laura Jean and the boys in the, the rest of the books. Um, if you didn't know this is all about our main character Laura Jean and whenever she has a crush on a boy she writes a letter but then like puts it in a box and never plans to send them out. But one day all five of those letters end up being sent out to the boys that she's had crushes on and it's the repercussions of that and Laura Jean trying to deal with that and I, I loved this movie so much so I can't wait to dive into these books. Okay the next set of books is also a trilogy and of course it is the Royally series by Emma Chase. The first book being Royally Screwed, the second book being Royally Matched, and the third book being Royally Endowed. I read these books at the beginning of the year via audiobook and I loved them so much that I decided to purchase all of the physical copies. I've yet to read the spin-off slash fourth book in the series but I hope to read that soon. I'm not going to be going into a summary for these books because I've talked about them in my January wrap up. It's the last the last books I talk about in that video or you can check out my romance reads recommendations video which is two videos back um, and that is the first set of books that I talk about so if you really want to know what that the series a romance royalty series that's so good all five out of five stars for me please go check out the video to figure out what these books are about. The next book is a book that I won in a Goodreads giveaway and that is More Than Words by Jill Santolopo. I'm really sorry if I'm butchering that. So I'm just gonna read the back of the book for this one because I don't really know all that much about it. Nina Gregory has always been a good daughter. Raised by her father, owner of New York City's glamorous Gregory Hotels, Nina was taught that family reputation and legacy are what matter most and Tim, her devoted boyfriend and best friend since childhood, feels the same. But when Nina's father dies, he leaves behind a secret that shocks Nina to her core. As her world falls apart, Nina begins to see the men in her life, her father, her boyfriend, and unexpectedly her boss, Raphael, in a new light. Soon, Nina finds herself caught between the world she loves and a passion that could upend everything. From the New York Times bestselling author, The Light We Lost, comes a heartbreaking and romantic novel about grief, loss, love, and self-discovery. More Than Words is a tender tribute to how we choose which life we are meant to live. That sounds really good. I got an advanced reader copy, I think, so I don't know if anything's different, but this looks so good and the cover is gorgeous and I really hope to pick this one up soon. Next is a book that I just recently finished reading and that is The Hating Game by Sally Thorne. I love this just by the way this isn't a review but I will talk about this in my February wrap-up. So this book is mainly centered around kind of like this publishing company. Um, we have two co-CEOs. Co Our two main characters are an assistant to one of the CEOs and the CEOs are basically butting heads against each other and these two assistants to them 
hate each other to no end. But then the CEOs of this company tell all of their employees that they're coming up with this new important position that is like basically right below the CEO position. And these two assistants, Lucy and Josh, are like basically butting heads competing to get this position. And who knows, by competing to get this position may result in them realizing that they actually don't completely hate one another. I love this book so much and I can't wait to discuss it with y'all in my February wrap up. Next I got Daughter of the Siren Queen by Trisha Levenseller. I actually got this off of Thrift Books, so it's an old library book from I believe the New York Public Library, which is super cool. This is the conclusion to the Daughter of the Pirate King duology. Um, I read Daughter of the Pirate King in January, so since I finished that book I went and purchased for a cheaper price off of Thrift Books, the continuation to that story. I have yet to read this yet. I really, really, really want to. But the Daughter of the Pirate King, the first book is basically about our main character, Alosa, and she is the daughter of this really famous high up there, basically King of the Pirates. And she ends up purposefully getting captured onto this other pirate ship to try and find a missing piece to a map that her father sent her out to find and turns out she may start having feelings for the first mate of that ship. This is the continuation to that because it ended on like quite a cliffhanger in my opinion um so I can't wait to read this one too. Next we have Slayer by Kirsten White. I am so excited for this book. I don't know why I haven't read it yet but I really really want to. If you didn't know Buffy the Vampire Slayer is my favorite tv show of all time. I really need to get to this. And um, this is like a reimagining story of Buffy the Vampire Slayer or it's set after. I'm not sure. How about I just read the summary for y'all. Nina and her twin sister Artemis are far from normal. It's hard to be when you grow up at the Watchers Academy, which is a bit different from your average boarding school. Here teens are trained as guides for slayers, girls gifted with supernatural strength to fight the forces of darkness. But while Nina's mother is a prominent member of the Watcher's Council, Nina has never embraced the violent Watcher lifestyle. Instead, she follows her instincts to heal, carving out a path for herself as the school medic. Until the day Nina's life changes forever. Thanks to Buffy, the famous and infamous slayer that Nina's father died protecting. <gasps> is this Giles's kid? <gasps> No, is this Giles' kid? Oh my god, is this Giles' kid? I'm gonna die if this is Giles' kid. Nina is not the only newest chosen one. She's the last Slayer ever, period. As Nina hones her skills with the Watcher in training, Leo, there's plenty to keep her occupied. A monster fighting ring, a demon who can eat happiness, a shadowy figure that keeps popping up in Nina's dreams. But it's not until bodies start turning up that Nina's new powers will truly be tested because someone she loves might be next. One thing is clear, being chosen is easy. Making choices is hard. This is so good. This sounds like this is the kid. This follows the kid of Giles, who is the watcher to Buffy. I'm so excited. I need to get to reading this like now. Okay, so the last three books that I have to talk about today are books that I decided to get on a Barnes & Noble little trip haul and be proud of me because I bought three books, one of which was a hardback and only spent three of my own dollars because I had my membership discount, I had a coupon, and I had two gift cards. So like I actually spent three dollars on three of these books. Be proud of me, okay? <laughs> Firstly, I bought A Shattered World by Tiffany King. Okay, so for this book, I'm just gonna read the back of it too because I don't remember all that much about it. Mackenzie Robinson once had hope for what life had to offer, but everything changed on the night of her graduation. A year later, the only way she can find comfort is by keeping her head down and hoping she remains unnoticed at college. When Bentley James discovered Mac in that twisted SUV, he was just a new EMT on his first call. It was a gut-wrenching moment that made him realize not everyone can be saved, and sometimes they don't want to be. A chance encounter on campus brings Bentley back into Mac's life. Despite her initial resistance, he sets out to discover the girl hiding beneath a shield of seclusion. He evokes painful memories in Mac, 
but also feelings. As the spark between them grows, Mac must decide if she can let go of the past and believe in something as fragile as love. This is a book I found in the romance section at Barnes & Noble. This sounds like something I would really, really enjoy. Next in that whole Barnes & Noble group, I have my current read, A Quiet Kind of Thunder by Sarah Barnard. I'm only on page, I believe, 115, 107, um, and I am really, really enjoying it. I love it so much. It deals with the mental health and disabilities, and it's like, so good already. I heard about this book from Vendi from Caught Between Pages and she raves about this book because I believe one of her best friends recommended to recommended it to her because it's one of her best friend's favorite books I want to say and I am loving it right now. I'll be the back of this one again. <laughs> Steffi has been a selective mute for most of her life. She suffers from crippling anxiety and despite her wishes in most situations simply can't open her mouth to get the words out. Steffi's been silent for so long that she feels completely invisible but Reese, the new boy at school, sees her. He's deaf and her knowledge of basic sign language means that she's assigned to help him acclimate. To Reese, it doesn't matter that Steffi barely talks. As they find ways to communicate, Steffi discovers that she does have a voice and that she's falling in love with the one person who makes her feel brave enough to use it. But as she starts to overcome a lifelong challenge, she'll soon confront questions about the nature of her own identity and the very essence of what it is to know another person. I am loving this right now. I can already tell you this is gonna probably be a five-star read for me. And the last book that I have to talk about today is A Curse So Dark and Lonely by Bridget Kummer. This was one of my most anticipated reads of 2019 and I cannot wait to get into it. I don't know anything about this book except it is a retelling of Beauty and the Beast and I'm not going to tell you anything else about it. I'm not going to learn anything else about it because I'm going to go into it blind because every Beauty and the Beast retelling is different and I love learning about different things so I'm not going to read the summary. Oh look look how gorgeous this cover is by the way like it is stunning. But yes this is a Beauty and the Beast retelling and I love my Beauty and the Beast retellings so I want to read this one so soon. There's so many books. I just want to read. So there you have it. Those were all of the books that I bought in January and February. I know I wasn't going to buy any books that I didn't need to in 2019, but I guess plans change. My wallet's going to be crying for a while. <laughs> if you have read any of these books or you would like to, please let me know down in the comments below. I would love to start up a conversation with you about them. Also, if there's like one book on this list where you're like, Avery, you need to read this like right now. Like, push me to read a book. Like, do it. Peer pressure me. I need it. <laughs> Please let me know <laughs> down below as well. But anyways, thank you all so much for watching, and I will see you all soon with a new video. Bye!